this is the now yes flying and foraging we are discussed and the pollen gathering now they are pollen gathered now the communication in the bees next part it is the communication bees bees have a unique language that the bee dance communicate among themselves about the distance and the direction of the food source by this the communication they get the perfect idea how much the source of food source is the how much away from the colony and in which direction so this is the very clear cut knowledge they can give to the, the another form another uh, bees the searchers are the, the foragers they can uh, give the message accurately so the experienced forager bee function as the scout bees they are the guide or the scout scout bees they search vegetation in the surrounding for food source on the locating of food source the scout bees performs the dance on the surface of the comb through this dance the scout bee communicates with the potential forager in the hive the information about the location in respect to sun the quality and the amount of food bee dance is of the two types one is the known as the round dance and another one known as the tail wagging dance the communication dance is the sequence of elaborate movements of the posterior abdomen and of the bees in a circles or the other pattern the vigor of dance and the frequency patterns to movement depend upon the quality quantity and the distance of the food source so see uh, with the help of this video you can get the idea how they are communicate Aristotle was one of the first to document the intriguing behavior of honeybees. How is it, for instance, that a colony coordinates its workers' activity? What appears to be a random swarming mass of life may actually be intelligent behavior. A foraging honeybee will eventually discover a new food source, such as a freshly blooming flower or artificial feeder placed by a scientist. After this visit, an interesting thing happens. Over the next few minutes, many other bees arrive at the same location. They don't travel as a group. Instead, each bee finds the food source individually. How could these bees, who held no previous knowledge of this site, suddenly know precisely where the feeder was located? Is it possible that the animals communicate amongst themselves? To answer this question, Austrian biologist Karl von Frisch devised a series of experiments in the 1940s. Researchers at Georgia Tech have reproduced von Frisch's pioneering experiments using a modern observation hive. Two feeders are placed in different directions away from the hive. At each location, visiting honeybees are marked with a small spot of paint. A separate colour of paint is used at each station. So, when a bee returns to the hive, it can easily be determined which feeding site it visited. Before von Frisch, other scientists had observed that returning bees tended to waggle about excitedly in a figure eight pattern before sharing the collected pollen and nectar with their hive mates. In this two station experiment, von Frisch noticed that the bees returning from the same feeding source danced differently from bees that arrived from the other location. While both sets of bees perform the classic figure eight dance, the orientation of the dances is offset between the two groups. Bees returning from one feeder perform a related version of the dance done by the other bees. Incredibly, the angle of rotation precisely matches the angle between the feeding stations and the hive. This must be a clue to the mystery of how the bees are able to share information about the location of food. 
Through further experimentation, details of the grammar of the honeybee's dance language began to emerge. The dance exploits two fundamental tools available to the honeybee. First, their ability to see ultraviolet and polarized light allows them to determine the location of the sun at all times. Ultraviolet light is able to penetrate thick clouds or fog. Also, as light from the sun passes through the atmosphere, it's polarized in a direction towards the sun when viewed from the earth. Devices like polarized film, sunglasses, or honeybee eyes can detect this orientation and determine the position of the sun even while looking in the opposite direction. This gives the bees a type of solar compass, allowing them to always know the precise position of the sun in the sky. A honeybee's entire environment seems to be constantly pointing towards the sun. In addition to this solar compass, bees possess a finely tuned internal clock. This clock is accurate enough for the bees to constantly estimate the new position of the sun as it travels across the sky. In this way, a honeybee can know the current orientation of the sun even after spending many hours within a dark hive. They can even take into account changes in seasons or latitudes. Inside of a dark vertically oriented beehive, the natural shared reference point is gravity, establishing both an up and a down direction. A bee's solar compass and internal clock provides another communal reference point, the sun. By pairing these two global constants, the bees form a simple language. Within the hive, the direction up, away from gravity, substitutes for the location of the sun. Then the angle that the bee dances compared to this up direction is the same angle a bee should fly away from the sun in order to find the target flower. So if the bee dances directly upward, other bees know that they can find flowers by flying directly towards the sun. If a bee dances 90 degrees to the left, then bees leaving the hive should fly 90 degrees to the left of the sun. A bee angling its dance towards the ground will let others know to fly directly away from the sun. As the day goes by, a bee will even use its internal clock to adjust for the movement of the sun in the sky. This lets fellow workers always know the correct direction to travel in order to find food. The central waggle section of the bee's dance also contains information about the distance to a food source. Longer time spent in this part of the dance means that the food is further away. Shorter durations mean that the food is closer by. In general, a bee increases the duration of this section by one second for every kilometer of distance to the food. When food is within several meters of the hive, this central section of the dance will shrink, causing a circular dance. For bees, distance is actually measured by the amount of energy it takes them to travel. Thus, a strong headwind could cause a bee to dance as if the food came from a further distance away. Aristotle was one of the first to document the intriguing behaviour of honeybees. How is it, for instance, that a colony coordinates its workers' activity? What appears to be a random swarming mass of life may actually be intelligent behaviour. A foraging honey... Instead, each bee... Yes. See, these are the students. This is the bee communication. In the honeybee that the language dance language with the help of them they can get the idea in this the experiment it wants to be uh, with the experiment is there you can save the two source of food and the marking on the bee and that forager bee goes to the hive and to a particular dance when this is the below the 50 meter distance below the 50 meter, 
they can show the wrong dam but when in the in kilometer away than the kilometer then they can show the tail waiting dam too and the as per the sun direction they can show the angle of the waiting tail waiting angle they can see in the after the waiting and generally make the circ one of the eight eight figure and the symbol and the direction of the by the sun is there is the mark on the two bees a and the b and kept in a same uh, angle direction got the in upper one is toward the right side and one is toward the left side both bees can show the only the direction change but the in same distance are showing in the experiment by the wagging that the one wagging for uh, equal to for one second wagging for the one kilometer is there and generally how if that the distance is so low that they are more showing the wagging uh, distance the timing of wagging is the, the faster and if the distance is the, the apart is there they are the the timing of that is the showing the slow means it require far away if the uh, food source is the far away from the colony such a experiment is shown there by this uh, the communication there are the again uh, so many dances are observed like the alarm dance there joy dance is there joy dance for uh, already explained that when the new queen is the uh, emerging in the colony and that's so the talk to their welcome of that the queen once the queen is emerged they are welcomed the, of the queen by showing the, the, the performing the dance that's on the joy dance then there is the sum of the danger situation if is that the predator is attacking or their enemy is there they can the alarm to uh, another member by uh, releasing the pheromones that the pheromone is one of the alarm pheromone is there and so the immediate that the ready for to the attacking the to their predator or the enemy which is one of the alarm pheromone round dance tail waiting dance and the dry dance other and these are the de communication which is occur in the bee now the another part of the that the another part that the diseases and the bee enemy of the honey bee as like the human being or the other animal bees also the suffer by the number of the diseases and there is the number of the predators enemies are there now here the bees are the suffered by the protozoan disease bacterial disease fungal disease and that's the one of the brood disease first we are discuss about the brood diseases brood diseases are the characterized by the discord uh, discolored larvae dark puncture and the sunken capping these are the some symptoms how we are identify the bees are the uh, disease or not they are suffered by the any uh, trouble that the symptoms like this the discolored larvae first dark punctured and the sunken camping in that uh, when the cell are the capped so at the time of the pupation so this is the cap, cap is the sunken and the punctured scattered good inside the cell and the foul smell the smell is the getting there so these are the caused by the various viral bacterial and the fungal pathogen there are the five types these are the five types one is the american fowl brood disease it is caused by the bacilli bacteria that is the first one is the bacterial disease we are discuss here the american fowl brood it is caused by the bacilli bacteria second one is the european fowl brood it is also caused by the bacteria bacillus and the streptococcus the incidentally these two diseases are not reported from the tropical country then the chalk brood another disease known as chalk brood the larvae look like the chalk color whitish larvae is embedded in the uh, cells are there dead larvae and it is the caused by the fungus so all bodies when the hypes are there develop from the hypes 
and the uh, whitish color is also here. Instead of creamy, they are white. The pericystis surface, it converts larvae into the chalk white masses of mycelium. And the stone group, the darkish black is colored or developed by this asparagus and the fungal develops. It is also called the fungal disease caused by the asparagus flavors. The spores of this fungus germinate in the alimentary canal of larvae and the adult. Then the sac brood this is the viral. The larvae become the sac like or the pouch like with the tough skin and the dye. So now these are the protozoan disease. The another form is the protozoan disease. This is the nosema disease. The causative agent is the sporozoan nosema apis. This is the pathogen insect. Infects the lining of the stomach, causing the dysentery. The spores of pathogen passed out with the fecus of infected bees, and the disease occurs in the winter and the quickly deflates the bee population. This is the protozoan. The spores is the insert into the food source or the water, and the amoebic disease, like the amoeba. Amoeba disease. The positive agent of this the disease is Malpighia, Malpighia amoeba, Malpighia. Malpighia antibodies. What is that? What is that? Malpighia amoeba, Malpighia. It infects the Malpighia antibodies. The cystis amoeba passed into the intestine and then the to exterior with the fecal matter. It is result of in dysentery, fertilization of the brood boxes and premise with the glacial acetic acid. Fumes of 40 percent formalin solutions can be taken as a preventive measure for both the protozoan disease. If this is the protozoan disease is occurred by the nosema or the amoeba, then we are treated with these the boxes by the sterilization with the glacial acidic or the 40 percent formalin by uh, moving the, or the by shifting the uh, five friends into the another box. So this the con in control. Uh, this is the film on the disease in the bee. Hello, and welcome back to Honey Bees and Beekeeping: A Year in the Life of an Apiary. I'm Dr. Keith Delaplane, extension entomologist and honeybee specialist at the University of Georgia. Our beehives are still in the mountains, hopefully making us a big honey crop. So this is a good time to go over other topics in beekeeping that aren't necessarily tied to our honey production schedule. In the last show, we visited a commercial queen and package bee producer. In this show, we go over parasites, pests, and diseases of honeybees. Honeybees are attacked by bacteria, viruses, protozoans, fungi, and parasitic mites. Plus, bee equipment is attacked by other insects. Controlling these diseases and pests requires constant vigilance by a beekeeper. Most state departments of agriculture have apiary inspection programs and require all hives to be registered. In this manner, states can routinely inspect hives and regulate their movement in the event of epidemic disease or pest outbreak. Most mail order packages and queens have health certificates from originating states that assure buyers of healthy bees. These services are only available if hives are registered. See your county extension agent for help in registering and inspecting your hives. However, don't rely on inspectors or anyone else to alert you to health problems in your hives. Know the health situation in your hives. Learn the symptoms of the major bee health problems and always be on the lookout for them. Disease and pest control is a big topic in beekeeping, and we can only go over the major points here: American fowl brood, European fowl brood, Nosema, chalk brood, sac brood, wax moths, tracheal mites, varroa mites, and queenlessness. My companion book for this video series covers disease and pest control in greater detail. American fowl brood, or AFB, is the most serious disease to infect any honeybee colony. 
It is caused by the bacterium Bacillus larvae, which forms infectious that persist in honey and equipment for at least 35 years. The disease spreads when spores are transported on drifting bees, hive parts, clothing, hive tools, or contaminated honey. Every beekeeper should learn to identify AFB symptoms. First, as you open a hive with AFB, you may smell a foul glue pot odor from the decaying brood. Brood killed by AFB are usually capped, and the cappings are sunken inward and perforated. At first, the dead larva or pupa is dull white, then progresses from tan to brown to black as it decays. Perhaps the best symptom is brood ropiness. If you find a suspicious cell of brood, insert a small stick in the cell, mix up the contents, and withdraw the stick. Brood killed by AFB will be stringy and rope out up to one inch. In later stages, dead brood dry down to individual scales, each containing billions of spores. Check for scales by holding the comb so that sunlight reaches into cells. Anytime you handle an AFB colony, clean up carefully to prevent contaminating other colonies with spores. First, heat sterilize your hive tool with a smoker before you leave the site. Back inside, wash any article that touched infected bees or equipment. Most of all, wash your hands. Good AFB management centers around prevention. Teramycin is the only drug approved in the U.S. for preventing AFB. Feed teramycin in spring and fall and never within four weeks of a marketable nectar flow. The objective is to kill bacteria in the vegetative stage before they form resistant spores. This is the treatment we gave our bees when we installed them in the hives. Because the infected spores are so abundant, resilient, and long-lived, AFB is practically impossible to cure. For this reason, most states burn AFB-infected colonies. This is the surest and cheapest way to eliminate this disease. European fowl brood, or EFB, is caused by the bacterium Melosococcus pluton. Larvae are often infected with other bacteria too, such as Bacillus alvei. So ESB may actually be a complex of several diseases. Its symptoms are often confused with American fowl brood, but it is much less serious and often curable. Therefore, it's important for a beekeeper to be able to distinguish between the two. Larvae are infected during the first two days after hatching when they eat food contaminated with the ESB bacterium. As long as bees can clean out dead and infected larvae, the disease usually goes away on its own. The EFB bacterium does not form long-lived spores, like with AFB, but it can persist in contaminated material. Larvae with EFB usually die before they are capped, and still in the coiled stage. They are yellow-colored, progressing to brown, at which point their white tracheal tubes show through the skin. The dead larvae are only slightly ropey when you mix them up with a stick. EFB is prevented by following the same medication regimen recommended for AFB. Feed teramycin in autumn and early spring. To treat a colony with EFB, give it a frame of young brood from another colony and feed one-to-one -one sugar syrup.
Nosema is a disease of adult bees caused by the protozoan Nosema apis. It rarely kills a colony outright, but causes slow population growth in spring, low honey production, high incidence of queenlessness, and, probably, numerous secondary illnesses. The disease begins when adult bees eat spores of Nosema apis, which germinate in the gut. The vegetative stage of the protozoan invades cells lining the gut wall, disrupting normal digestion. Nosema is best prevented by feeding bees Fumadil B in sugar syrup in autumn and spring. Protect hives from direct wind and keep them away from low spots in your yard that collect cool, humid air. Only a microscopic examination can confirm Nosema disease. Your county extension agent, bee inspector, or local bee association can help you find a diagnostic service. Yes. yes, students, 